welcome to the development tea uh, of the semester. And uh, today we have uh, Jeffrey Kuo presenting um, his research um, on a, the election in Taiwan. Um, so without, I mean, for those of you who were here last semester, this will be an update of uh, Jeffrey's work. Uh, and uh, I hope that you're as uh, excited as looking forward to his presentation today. Without further ado, um, just let's just uh, yield the floor to Jeffrey. Okay. Um, can everybody hear me well? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you, IAEP, for giving me this opportunity to present my work. And um, this project previously was circulated under a different name, but now it is named uh, uh, Distance is the Soul of the Beauty, How Never Man's Change Your Vote. Okay, so um, um, since this is just the preliminary draft, so um, any questions or feedbacks or comments are very welcome. Okay, and let's move to the uh, the overview of today. So the main question I would like to add in this um, paper, first of all, is I would like to know does the various degree of the exposure to the never met visitors in Taiwan change the political identification across the municipalities, okay? And a little bit of the extended to a bigger topic of this research project is that does the economic integration say that any kind of any formats of the inter economic integration reduce the political tension? So, what kind of a method I many use in this uh, project? First of all, uh, I run a basic, uh, you know, the OLS uh, model to taste to test the basic correlation of the political variables and the economic variables I'm interested in. Secondly, I use the differences in differences model, differences in differences. Uh, method to test the magnitude of the preferential trade uh, agreement shock. So I will elaborate that in the in the in the eight, later on of today's presentation. The third one is I apply the um, regression discontinuity design to test whether there's a uh, differences, there's a jump uh, around the cutoff of the high uh, visitor exposure area and low visitor exposure area in Taiwan, and does their um, political ideology and party recognition uh, has a lot of the differences in two different regions. And then a little bit of the preview of, of the result. So the OLS result most agree with that the higher degree of the visitor exposure uh, bringing more switch of the party recognition. Uh, secondly, um, the differences and in differences result confirm that the shock, the ECFA, the e ECFA means Economic Cooperation Framework Agreement, and that is a preferential trade agreement between Taiwan and China. This shock does exist across the uh, four different presidential election in Taiwan. So pre-shock and after shock, we could see that um, the coefficient we estimate are uh, significant. But lastly, uh, we compare the result of the regression discontinuity design and different years of the presidential election. And we found that before the shock, before the uh, preferential trade agreement came into effect, the boundary between the high and low tourist or visitors exposure areas are not so obvious, whereas after the shock, the high and low areas, their 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 um, differences, the boundary become more significant. Okay, and the contribution to a literature, um, I list out uh, five points here. First of all, this paper I combine uh, different database published by Taiwanese government. So um, it, it took me a lot of time to uh, merge all of the different data set. Uh, first of all, it's the, uh, uh, the visitors data from the tourist bureau's annual survey. So that's the first one. But secondly, the main sources of the data is from the Central uh, Election Committee in Taiwan. And 
as we know that the political outcome or the other election outcomes are depends on a lot of things. It might depends on the region's um, development degree, their average income, their constituents' uh, average education level, and also like those those regions regions distance to the main tourist attraction in Taiwan. So I would say this is pro. Uh, this is the uh, main contribution of this paper. Secondly, I take a different perspective to review the shock of the ECFA. So a lot of the paper, if you're uh, aware of the um, um, David Atour, David Dorn, and Golden Hansen, their, their literature, uh, they have a sequence of the literature that it's uh, basically focused on the China shock, but most of their their paper are um, focused on the goods goods markets. So they want to analyze like the China shock from the perspective of the import competition of the goods. So how does that um, affect the labor market? How does that affect the good market? But now I took a different route. I take a look of the one of the uh, stadium, stadium uh, sector in the services in trade. I take a look of the um, uh, sudden policy shock of the uh, legalized the tourism uh, across the street. And the, the rest of the points are, um, the third points are I use the uh, regression discontinuity design to test if there is a threshold of the different level of the uh, visitor exposure. And this is never show up in the tourism uh, economics literature uh, either. And lastly, uh, um, I, if you take a look, uh, if you think about this into a, if you take this into a bigger picture, uh, this is actually a counter example of the conventional economic integration theory. What does it mean? It means that the economic integration doesn't uh, help you to, uh, doesn't lead you uh, necessarily to the political convergence in the in the future. Okay, so the last point is what I have just said. Uh, I just show that if you take into a bigger pro uh, picture to show that bilateralism need not reduce the nationalism. Okay, and this is the outline for today. I already finished the, the first part, then let's move to the conceptual background. Okay, so two of the important things that we observe uh, from our data. The first one is since 2010, uh, there's a policy shock, there's a sudden lift, and it's as part of the preferential trade agreement between Taiwan and, and China that legalize the tourist uh, uh, for the both sides. So before then, uh, for those who are not very familiar with the history uh, of the cross trade, uh, before then, um, both sides are uh, limit their citizens to directly travel to another side, uh, to another uh, to another side. Uh, <clears throat> so this serves as the uh, the main shock of of this uh, of my uh, of my research, and um, interestingly. Uh, we found out that there is another um, stylist fact that we, we observe is that uh, from 2010, the mainstream Taiwanese public opinion shift from pro-China towards self-determined. So originally people believe that um, um, since China have a very large domestic market, so it would be better if we could have more economic cooperation in terms of, um, you know, like tourism or goods or any kind of investment agreement. But after this, the things actually move the opposite direction of the expectation. So um, the interaction didn't bring the more uh, more uh, close closeness uh, politically. Uh, it actually increased the tense. And um, if you put it into a deck, uh, if you're using a, the acidic graph, uh, I'm trying to, uh, you know, like trying to pin down the causality of those two, two terms. Uh, and hopefully I could, I, could, I could persuade you at the end of today's uh, presentation.
Okay, so uh, let's go to the uh, a little bit of the visualization of the data. So um, on the left hand side is, oh, sorry, I didn't change the color. Yeah, I forget it. I, yeah, the China should use the red line, but here China is the blue line. Uh, the number of the inbound visitor here, uh, um, the trend is like this. So as you can see, like started from 2008, there's a sudden increase of the uh, number of the Chinese tourist uh, uh, visitors uh, coming to Taiwan. And if you're using the different, uh, if, if we're using the, uh, the share of the inbound visitor, you see that the, the composition of the total international uh, visitors uh, changes, changes a lot after 2008. So the sudden change is in this period. So 2008 to 2016, there is a totally structural change. And this is the shock I'm trying to uh, convince you. And then if we take a look of the, um, the policy, and um, as we could see the table here. So started from 2010 and 2011, the first uh, couple of the city that opened up the visitors to Taiwan, um, it's only three cities here. So it's the three, uh, uh, well, I would say probably it's the, the metropolitan uh, in the coastal area of the China. So it's Beijing, Shanghai, and Xiamen. And then all the way to uh, 2015, see the number that opened up the tourism for the Chinese citizens to travel to Taiwan started from three cities all the way to 47 cities and this does not does not include the original cities that in the Fujian and Guangdong provinces they already have the so-called street million links so those of the the travelers those of the the residents in those provinces they are allowed to travel to Taiwan uh, before those those uh uh, before those, uh, before the, the 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 trade agreement signed in 2010. Okay, so this is just a big uh, significant level I would like to show you. And then the other things, the part B, the the uh, the result. I'm telling you the cost first, and now the results here. So what we see in the um, political ideology change. So if we compare the differences of the 2008 presidential election in Taiwan and 2016 presidential election in Taiwan, you can see that KMT is the Kuomintang, which is the party that pro-China, they lose a lot of the vote. So the upper two diagram, uh, the upper two graph here means the territories of the party that win the election. Okay, so the small, small cells that you see in the map here, it's actually the observation I use in this research. So um, if you take a look of the uh, 2008 and 2016, the, uh, there are a lot of the original, it's blue territory become a green territory. And it's also the case if we take a look of the voting share differences. So you can see this is represent the, the darker, uh, more darker of the blue uh, represent that uh, the winning margin of the share, the vote, uh, 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 the KMT, the pro-China party has larger share of the, uh, have, have the larger winning margin on the share of the vote. Whereas if you take a look of the 2016's, uh, uh, the result of the 2016's uh, picture, you find that the blue territo ter territory, it's not as dark as before. And some of the light blue territories in 2008, right now actually becomes the green territory. Okay, so this could capture the uh, idea that I just told you that there is a shift of the political ideology between this period. And at the same time, what happened? At the same time that there's a FTA, there's a FTA between Taiwan and China and legalize the travel groups uh, between the two sides. And that's never happened before. So is it the coincidence or um, 
is it what um, this is something I'm going to explore in this uh, research. Um, so let's move to the um, the the uh, institutional background here. So uh, in Taiwan, uh, since the modern modern uh, modern democratization, uh, there are two major parties in Taiwan. So just like in the U.S., um, two major parties they clash in every kind of the uh, ideology. But here we only focus on their their policy and their view of the cross-strait relationship. Uh, where I mean cross-strait means the relationship between China and Taiwan. Okay, and two parties they both nominate a presidential candidate since 1996. So why we focus on the presidential election? Because you know in 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 Taiwan the the people that steer the wheel uh, on the foreign policy is the president. Well, it's the highest leader in Taiwan. So if you vote for the uh, this candidate, that doesn't mean that you are, that doesn't only means that you like uh, his personality or characteristics, or uh, that doesn't mean that uh, uh, you, you just vote for him. That means you probably like his po policy or you recognize his policy. Um, in terms of everything. And the most important things in Taiwan um, uh, election, I'll probably say that every time uh, the hottest debate is always brought up uh, at the cross strait uh, issue. So that's the reason why I think that the presidential election, the vote shift could represent the political ideology shift. Okay, and the political system right now in Taiwan is in presidential election, everybody has one vote and it's a simple majority who wins who has the higher vote and you you could take over the office so there is no threshold of the the uh being uh there's no threshold to win the election there's yeah there's no threshold to win the election so the 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 rules of the election is relatively simple it's not like U.S. using the uh, electoral college, using the indirect uh, um, system, we are using the direct system. Okay, and so every constituent, every citizen uh, that is older than twenty years old in Taiwan are considered to be a uh, legit cons constituent. So you have the right to vote, but you doesn't have to. You have the right to vote. Okay, and the, the presidential term is four years. So the, the table on the line here, it's, um, I just telling you that this is the world that we are living in. So the Green Party, okay, across the, across the paper, across the, uh, this presentation, the Green Party represent the anti-China party. So if you are already familiar with, this is called, you know, DPP or uh, Min Jingdang in Chinese, whereas the, other one pro China party it's the blue party so it's the conventional uh Kuomintang or Chinese national party nationalist party okay so let's let's look into the data first of all of course the most important things for my dependent variable is the electoral data so electoral data coming from where coming from the central election Commis commission so the acronym is CEC so this is the HFA yeah. Yeah. So even before you, you tell me the data, I, I still don't know what your regression is going to be. Uh, I had the same comment last time. Um, so seeing you, you write outcome variable. So can you, in one sentence or two sentences, tell me what's going to be your left hand side, what's going to be your right hand side, so I can better understand the, why the data is important. Thank you. Sure. Um, if I could, <laughs> well, so, okay, one sentence. Left hand side is going to be the vote, the margin, and the, uh, margin of the vote share and right hand side are going to be the exposure of the Chinese visitor income of the municipalities average education of the municipalities and the population density of the of the uh, municipalities so the yeah. observation is 
it's district. It's in a small area of the district. So yeah, I always have a sentence at the beginning of your data slide where you say, my main sample is going to consist of 368 district D for the following years T from year, you know, first year to last year. Okay. Um, and this is valid for any PhD student. Like this is, you have to always be very clear. Okay. Um, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Remy. Um, I actually will. I actually will. Will will cover that. Um, you know, after this. But um, thanks to to brought up. Yeah. So this is gonna be the first part of the uh, election data, right? So I have twenty two uh, uh, second level uh, city and counties, but. I'm looking at the 368 district across Taiwan. But um, since I'm using the travel time, the driving travel time as the distance between those regions to the tourist attraction, so I have to get rid of the three remote islands, uh, uh, the, the, the district there. So I will lose some of the observation each year. And the timing of the election I include is starting from 2004, 2008, 2012, and 2016. And here comes the outcome variable. So the outcome variable is the winning margin of the vote. So uh, pro-China margin, if you will, you know, the winning margin of the going down uh, KMT and the voting share margin of those two parties. So you can see that the first one is the, it's just the absolute, the, the level data of the, of the differences of the uh, pro-China parties uh, vote, and the second one is the 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 winning margin in share of the vote. Okay, and the second important thing is that my independent variable, right? So how do I calculate the uh, uh, exposure to each of the regions in Taiwan? So I borrow it from the uh, you know, like the tourism economics uh, literature. So all this literature tell me that the distance is important. So how do you how do you calculate the dispersion of the tourists across the region? Uh, it's the most important things for you to um, calculate the index of the tourist exposure. So how do I do so? Here is the formula. So this I call CTE, so it's the tourist exposure. So there are three uh, variables here. So K means what? K means how many tourist attraction I choose from the annual survey data from the tourist bureau in Taiwan. So say that I'm, I'm interested in only the top tourist attraction. So in Taiwan, probably it's the Taipei 101 in Taipei, it's the, it's the most important a tourist attraction in Taiwan. So I will calculate the distance for all 355 uh, muni mun uh, municipalities distance, the driving time to Taipei 101. And what other two variable is? So I, as I said, I is the, um, I is the region and T is the year. So, you know, like from the annual survey of the, the inbound, uh, inbound tourists, incoming tourists, I can know like what is the number of the Chinese tourists aggregately. And then from that report, I also can know that which, which uh, tourist attraction, how many of them have the relative visit. And then by using the uh, GIS system, I could calculate out the driving time. Right, so uh, for giving you a, a better example, why don't we just take a look of the, the uh, one of the example. So say now this is called CTE superscript three, I 2016, what does it mean? So this means one year period of Chinese visitor uh, expo exposure index in 2016 with respect to the district I. So, from the data I have in 2015, there were 4.18 million visits of the Chinese tourists. Okay, so here, the, the um, numerator, the first term of the numerator become 4.18. And then I figure out which three uh, tourist attraction uh, has the highest uh, uh, relative visit. And I find out it's Taipei 101, National Palace Museum, and CKS Memorial. 
and they have the relative number here. So that's correspondingly, it's 59.72 and it's 48 and it's uh, 30, 37. So then I could calculate it by this formula, right? So it's just basically just like a weighted average of the uh, of the uh, the the um, you know like how many how many how many tourists go there and um, their different. Yeah, can you explain to me how do you know the relative visit? Oh, uh, it's on the report. Oh, uh, the report from uh, yeah yeah. So this so, is on the report. Yeah. So for each tourist, they you know where they have been, more or less. Yes. Yes. In okay. that year, yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. So this is just one of the indicator. So this is three, right? So you could choose the super superior as one. That means you only look at the top, the top, very top of the uh, 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 tourist attraction in Taiwan. But but that will not be robust, right? So in order to be like uh, to measure the 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 exposure of the 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 tourist in Taiwan, uh, ideally, if you have like ten or a hundred tourist the uh, tourist attractions data, that would be uh, that would be perfect. But we don't. We only have top 10 uh, relative visit um, right now, at least so far. So that is how I construct the um, construct the the uh, my main independent variable of interest. So this is gonna be the um, the report that you could see from the tourist bureau uh, of the Ministry of the Transportation Taiwan. So. As you can see, so here, like here, I have the relatively, uh, I have the relative visits of each of the tourist attraction. Okay, so now the CTE is a variable that's rely on I and T, right? So this is supposed to be a very good uh, variable that if I run the panel regression. Also have the variation in T, also have the variation in I. Okay, and uh, in, in, uh, if I visualize it, what does it mean? So, okay, so let's take a look. If I want to calculate what's the tourist uh, exposure in Miaoli, okay, one of the one of the districts I so one of the one of the district in in three hundred and fifty five district in Taiwan. So, what is the CTE sub, sub three? Uh, so yeah, I, I think I think we understand what you're doing. Uh, okay. What you, you're creating this measure is, is going to change over time at oh. the district level. Do you have a map of what it looks like for the, the district for the whole country? I want to see which no, districts. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to make it like like a like a like a voting data. So like you are talking about like um, which regions they have higher CTE, right? Yeah, so I want to know like the change between your first year yeah. and the last year. So I want to see where your variation is coming from, uh, because that to what extent what you're doing with your analysis, like your left hand side is going to be the politics, right hand side is going to be that measure. So I want to see what this measure looks like for the country. Uh, I know nothing about tourism in Taiwan, so you need to show me like the geography of that. Yeah, um, or um, and in a in, in, in an honest way, I just have a. a a difficulty to 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 plot out in, in state. I don't know why uh, it, that just doesn't work. But that will be on the top of my list to calculate out a GIS map um, in terms of the CT uh, variable. Other questions? If not, I'm moving to another data. Uh, so we already talked about the uh, the vote. Uh, which is our main uh, dependent variable. And then uh, we talk about a tourist, which is our main independent variable. So one of the important things that we see in the tourism uh, uh, economics literature is that we need to calculate the, uh, the distance. Okay, so luckily right now, the uh, all kind of the packages could do it for you. So all you need to do is just using the API uh, from, from one of the company and they will calculate uh, from, from, from their map. And that's how I do. Um, the thing is, like, how many or which which of the distance that you need to choose? So I finally choose the driving time, 
Okay, and I know this will gonna cause a problem since lots of people asked this last time. Uh, maybe the tourists come to Taiwan, they are not moved by the car, right? So maybe they are moved by the public transportation or uh, it's probably so uh, uncommon to see people move uh, use the airplane uh, by the airplane in Taiwan, but that is that is a valid point. So um, since the way I calculate the distance, the driving time, there's no providing. They are not providing the 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 uh, community time by the public transportation. So I'm trying to figure out how to solve this. But let's just take the uh, driving time as a pro proper proxy of the of the distance between the municipalities and the tourist attraction. Okay, and then coming to the identification. Okay, so this is the uh, the basic one. Um, well, so this is the the first one I would like to know is whether the vote margin, okay, in uh, district I uh, in certain election year T, it depends on the Chinese tourist exposure and the population density in that city and the average income. So how do I get the average income? I get the average income by the tax return data from Taiwan. And then the average, uh, the share of the college graduate in that city, uh, in that district. Jeffrey, you, you don't have a year fix effect? Um, in this two, I don't, but um, yeah, this is a good question. Um, if it's a panel, you you should like have the minimum municipality fix effect, which I see here. I see, the yeah, year but... fix effect. And to improve identification, you may also want to have like a, a region fix effect that will be above, you know, like so you can compare neighboring locations. So, so district uh, belong to what twenty? You say twenty regions, twenty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. So it's a higher level. Of, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes, for example, in the US, oh. we have state here fixed effect. So say you have like uh, Texas and you have Houston and then you have Dallas. Houston gets a lot of tourists. Dallas doesn't. But they're close to each other. Like it's just like two hours driving time or something. Uh, then that's a better identification because you're comparing very neighboring locations. I see. Um, I see. The other question I wanted to ask you is like, um, so your identification is coming from like this change in, in Chinese tourists. Um, you don't control for the change in tourists overall um, hmm. because one would be like to, to have a city, no, no city, but like a T for like every tourist. And so what matters for your identification is like Chinese tourists, not, not necessarily Japanese tourists, you know? And I don't know if Japanese tourists and Chinese tourists have different preferences. Mm. So, so in this CTE, um, so I think this somehow catch the idea here. So I have the total Chinese tourist here. So this is not the old tourist, but this is this relative visit is the average relative visit of all the tourists. So does that answer your question? Because um, if those two terms uh, times together, that means the average uh, relative visit of the Chinese tourists to certain of the tourist attraction. No, it doesn't answer my question. Uh, I don't see you understand what I don't think you understand what I'm saying. Um, what matters for you is like exposure to Chinese tourists. It's not exposure to tourists in general. So what you want to do is like you want to look at your measure controlling for exposure to tourism in general. Otherwise, you capture an effect of tourism and not an effect of Chinese tourism. But, but here, but here, I already, uh, the aggregate one is the, the inbounding Chinese tourist. So this term, the CT, it's not include the other. The, yeah, it's a control, it's a different measure. Uh, oh, oh, so you, oh, I see. So you want oh, so you want to add oh, see, oh, I see, I see. So you want me to add another term, maybe like a Japanese uh, tourist exposure. Oh, I see. Yeah, or like, like oh. non Chinese tourist exposure. And then I just switched like a uh, term here. I see, I see, I see, I see what you mean. 
Okay, yeah, so I have the different yearly data on the Japanese tourists or the other, oh, I see, other, other, other countries' tourists, and times the relative visit, which is the uh, average visit of each, each tourist attraction. Okay, and divided by the distance. Okay, I'll write it down. So the other country, yeah, I think, I think somehow you mentioned this last time as well. Okay. Yeah, so um, other, coming from the other countries, uh, Okay. So, any other questions, comments? Jeff, Jeff just uh, if I may, a uh, clarification sure, yeah. question. So the I here are municipalities, right? So this right. is you have twenty-two municipalities. Uh, three hundred and fifty-five. So the twenty-two is the second level. I'm focused on the third level. Oh, okay. Just okay. Thanks. Yeah. So it's like like like. Uh, Professor Jet, what well, Remy just said that I need to control the fixed effect of the higher level of the administrative area, right? So say that this is uh, a district in um, in the southern part of the Taiwan might have the differences, um, you know, not related to the exposure at all. Uh, they have the differences inherently from the northern part of the Taiwan's district. So I need to control like a bigger level of the, the administrative regions. Uh, I see, thanks. I just, yeah, I so think it, remember from your, I just seem to recall from your earlier slides that you, when you were describing the data, election data, you, you in that, on that slide, you uh, had 22 municipalities and then 300 and yeah. Yeah, so 368 districts. Yeah, so, so, so what I'm saying is, you may want to change the intro like the the description on this slide so so that it it because because you were saying the i was municipality so in my mind i'm seeing you have 22 municipality but 300 I see, I see. but what you are actually using are the eyes are districts right not not municipality yeah so 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 you know it's just I a think... trivial thing but <laughs> no 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 i think i totally understand yeah so um the interchange of the the unit of the administrative region is a big problem, but you know, like this is kind. Of, this is the problem of the translation. In, in Chinese, actually, we call the second level and the third level both munis municipalities. You know, like I see. I see. Yeah, I see. and but that that means two different things. That means two different things. Of course, one is bigger and one is smaller. And I think I think this is a valid point that I need to point out, or maybe just define it uh, more clearly in the beginning to tell people that I'm actually looking at a finer level of the data instead of only take a look of the 22, because the variation is not good enough if I only take a look of the 22. Yeah. Uh, you know, like a second level. You know, yeah. like yeah, I'm I'm thinking of a make a tree, uh, you know, a hierarchy diagram. Uh, in the future, but this time I didn't have, so that people could see that. Oh, what is the uh, the uh, you know, like how to say the uh, administrative uh, plan of the Taiwan. So we have the first level, uh, which is the whole island, uh, and the second level it's the county and cities, and the third level are going to be the districts, and villages, uh, mountain villages, all kind of the uh, you know, like the small cells that you see on the map. Well, thank you. Thanks. So this is gonna be my uh, the benchmark model. So that the second one is I just added a post uh, binary variable you know, indicator function of the uh, variable called post. So this is the indicator function if the t is larger than uh, 2010. So that means the data from 2012 and 2016, their post will be one, and the data from 2004 and 2008 data will be uh, zero. So basically it's the same uh, identification I have. I just added um, this binary return and um, to consider the uh, all of the interaction terms here. Okay, so these are going to uh, make me to confirm that the 
So the OS could give me the correlation, right? Well, yeah, maybe a little bit of a causality, but mostly the correlation. And then the second one, I could confirm that the, the, the shock does exist if the um, gamma one or all the gamma variables here are um, significant or most of them are significant, right? And the last part is um, the main uh, work like I, pre I previously present. So I'm trying to run the regression discontinuity model to see that whether there's a change of the boundary um, between the high and low tourist exposure uh, regions. So here is the specification. So why is the outcome variable? Um, as we see in the in the previous two methodology and di is the treatment how do we define a di i find i arbitrary so here is the sharp rd design i arbitrarily choose c and this is from the uh, conventional wisdom so c here is the four hours and 50 minutes of the driving time so if x the distance is larger than this distance is larger than this, D will be one. And if distance is smaller than this, D will be zero. So as you can see, if we use this treatment variable, we actually separate our data into two groups. One is called, I call, one I call the high exposure of the tourist. And second one I call the low exposure of the tourist. And, um, um, I also do the robustness check uh, by using a different um, polynomial, local polynomial here. So basically that's just the uh, robustness check of the model uh, to make sure that this is not only shows up uh, in, in uh, one, one, of the, one of the model, not only shows up in linear, linear model, not only shows up in a quadratic or, or third degree or, 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 or higher level, okay? So- hey, Jeff, can you explain like, you give a lot of details and I think uh, these details are not necessarily needed in a presentation like this, but the question is like, it seems you really focus on people who come for just one day. And I'd like to know more, like are, are Chinese people coming for one week usually, they're coming for the weekend or they're coming for a day? Like that's your assumption, but what's in the data? So I know I know aggregately uh, how many days they spent uh, in Taiwan, but I don't know particularly like how many days um, that a Chinese tourist spent in specific district I. So yeah, so I don't know. This probably is limited to the data, but um, I could definitely take a look of this. Like, uh, professor, you mean the uh, you mean the the, the you mean the oh, the higher uh, bigger picture is that the heterogeneity of heterogeneity. No, it's just the... your identification strategy is relying on this like regression discontinuity. This is regression discontinuity, you build it assuming that people come for one day. And I'm saying, what, what if people come for like two days? What if they come for one week? So like, it's about the power of your um, regression discontinuity design. It may be valid, but only for a selected group of individuals. So then you have this issue of like external validity and it where your effect is gonna be driven by these compliers to this regression discontinuity design. Okay, so um, um, that's okay. Just move on. That's okay. Move on. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I need to think about that. I need to think about that because um, um, you you mean there might be the differences between like long stay and short short stay tourists, right? That's the concern. Yeah, let's let's move on because you you don't have much time, and uh, we will okay. see some results. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's the that's the uh, that's the uh, original reason why I, I 
you know, I try to uh, apply the RD because, you know, like there are so many intangible uh, factors that that will affect the result of the elections, right? So um, it's probably not very uh, reasonable for us to try to capture it in, in one of the OLS model. So that's the reason why I try to, you know, like that's, that's, the, that's the spirit of the RD, right? So if, if it's closer to the boundaries, closer to the threshold, the only difference is, is that they are categorized in the low uh, tourist exposed or categorized as a high tourist exposed. That's the only difference. Is. Um, so the gap, the jump, um, the, the magnitude of the jump, or somehow give you give you give you give you the idea of whether whether the the, the party recognition change or not. Okay, but uh, yeah, but since Remy brought up that, I I need to uh, think about it more. Okay, so this is the uh, the one of the results I I wrote uh, using the RD model. As you can see, the uh, see the cutoff here. It's uh, I choose the previously I choose the um, airport as my tourist attraction. Uh, but this is just give you the uh, example of how do I run the RD here. Uh, so C is the cutoff point, and this is just the different local polynomial of the model, and that will give you the result. Okay, so for the OLS, this is the uh, result I have here. So um, as you can see, the first uh, dependent variable here, this is the vote margin, right? So that's the pro-China party margin, means how much, how many votes the uh, KMT win, right? And the other side of the table, the share margin means what's the share of the vote that the KMT win. Okay, and the uh, independent variable, it's the exposure of the Chinese tourists, uh, population density, income, college, and fix the fact, I mean, here I control the I. So um, I control the uh, district I, but I probably need to think about it more like, you know, using the uh, larger, larger, uh, administrative uh, regions um, into the regression. So what does it tell us? It tells us that um, if the, in, in a simple, simple OLS model, if the uh, tourist exposure index increase by one unit, the vote will decrease by um, 193 in average. Okay, and then if I control the rest of the, uh, if I put into uh, rest of the independent variable, I got a uh, similar result, uh, but um, I don't know why in the end of the uh, regression that the result become that significant. But if we take a look at the share margin, because we know the vote share, the dependent variable of the vote share always between 0% to 100%, right? So you win, you you have to win by one, two percent. Uh, there's no way that the, the, the negative or uh, the number that larger than 100 or lower than zero, right? So here, I previously, I suspect that the sure margin is supposed to be a clear, uh, should have the clear result, um, but that's not the case. Um, uh, I found that um, in a simple, uh, you know, like in a simple model, if we only include uh, the the exposure to the tourist, um, this is significant. But once I add more, become less significant. The variation become bigger, and uh, the last one, luckily, this one is significant here. So what about the uh, DID results? Uh, how do we how do we make sure that the the shock existence? Take a look of the the the, the post the, this binary variable. Remember that this is going to be the indicator function that if the year it's in 2012 and 2016, right? So half and half. Right now I have two time point which is uh, post is equal to zero and two time point now on the post is equal to one. 
So um, you can see from the from the uh, uh, winning margin of the vote for the pro China party, um, most of them are oh, sorry. I didn't report the uh, I didn't report the the um, the uh, standard error here. Yeah, just a mistake. Uh, um, yeah, most of them are significant. Uh, again, the shear margin does not show that much, but still have the characteristic inside. Okay, and lastly, um, you know, this is the from last 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 part of the uh, the the presentation. You know, like I just compared two 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 timing of the presentation election. The first one is the 2008 and the second one is 2016. So as you can see, the vote margin around the cutoff, the jump, it's not so significant. So you, you can say that actually statistically, the discontinuity does not exist pre-shock. And after the shock, after uh, if we apply it to the 2016's data, that the uh, some of the models shows that the jump, the discontinuity in two the different regions are actually more significant. Of course, this is rely on like how we choose the cutoff, right? So um, the robustness check, it's necessary. <clears throat> and once again, this is the uh, data from, um, from the voting share, okay? Uh, apologies for that. This because I, I, I use this uh, visual backdrop, so I need to uh, convert the PDF into the PowerPoint slides. So that's the reason why this looks a little bit ugly. But this shows what this shows that previously, before the shock, the the RD estimate it's not significant. Uh, it's not relatively significant. Whereas after the shock, the RD uh, estimate it's more significant. But using the voting share, just like what we did in OLS and DID, that the result become not so obvious. Okay, uh, like I said, I need to check C. So um, I'm trying to making a table that. Um, if I switch the different cutoff, if the result will, will change or not. But um, yeah, uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments. And yeah, so what if we use the CTE instead of the, the distance to the airport as the running variable in RD? And there's the result we get. Okay, so once again, in 2016's data, that the the discontinuity around the cutting cutoff uh, uh, point it's more significant in two of the local polynomial model. Okay, and then that uh, gonna move to the last part of the today. So, what is the conclusion? Conclusion means what? Uh, conclusion uh, I have here. So. This is two quotes I found. Actually, you know, like the the international trade, you know, the tourists actually pretty act pretty similar to what individual interaction. You know, like people don't know each other tend to think that oh, um, we might get closer, um, but um, if somehow there's a uh, there's an interaction, um, the 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 differences will show the differences will show and then the um well so in terms of the 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 paper that the 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 political ideology will shift so this just provide a i think it's quite interesting counter example of the you know mondeo's integration theory or, you know, like Marshall Plan uh, in Europe, uh, you know, like uh, Bob Schumer, so their, 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 their previous, uh, previous theory, right? So they believe that the economic integration could lead to the political stability. 
but somehow I didn't see that in the modern case of the uh, Taiwanese street. Okay, and um, the mechanism, I'm still working on it, and I'm trying to use a political model to capture that. One of the candidates is the Ming voter theorem, but um, uh, there are some of the difficulties uh, to apply that theory. Uh, but hopefully next time you see me, I could, I could give you a, a more complete discussion on the theoretical part. And that probably is it. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, really appreciate any comments or feedback will be very welcome. And um, the video will be posted on my website pretty soon. So um, thank you for coming and thank uh, happy spring breaks. We should have a spring break uh, coming up. And that's it for today. Thank you.